Hello, I'm Ashley Sellers, speech language pathologist and owner and operator of Speech Language and Beyond. Well, I am coming to you today so excited to celebrate Better Speech and Hearing Month. Our professional organization, American Speech Language Hearing Association, has designated this month in order for us to celebrate speech and hearing. So as you can see from the screen, our theme for this year is communication, the key to connection. So you see the key here, and it has all of these different words that signify the different ways that we communicate. So what I thought that I would do this year is for each week of the month, we will discuss a different area of speech and language that we cover as speech language pathologists. Now these videos are designed to be very short but yet informational. I'm not necessarily going to go over any tips or strategies but give you an understanding of what each area is how it's covered, what you can do to go about finding help professionally, and some things that you can do at home. So as you can see from the title on the screen, today we're gonna to talk about articulation. So let's go ahead and get into it. So basically, when we say articulation, we're talking about the way that we produce sounds within our words when we communicate. Now, in this instance, because I live in America and because I speak English, I'm specifically speaking about English speakers or English learning speakers that live here in America. And so according to some studies and some evaluations that we give out, specifically I give out an exam that's called the Goldman Fristo Test of Articulation 2. And based on this exam, and they do have a new one out, um, which is the Goldman Fristo Test of Articulation 3. So based on these exams, they expect for all English American speakers to have conquered or established all of the consonants and vowel sounds in the English language by seven years, eight months. So that is what articulation is. It's our ability to produce sounds clearly within words when we're communicating with other people. Okay, now when we think of it in terms of a communication disorder, you may know someone or your child, or maybe you even as a child had an articulation disorder. This is the inability to produce consonant and vowel sounds in words in a way where people can understand. When we as therapists work on a specific speech sound, we start at different levels. We start at isolation, saying the sound by itself, and syllables pairing it with the vowel and then this consonant and vowel together and then words the beginning the middle and the end phrases within each position within the word then also in sentences so anywhere there's an impairment on any one of those levels that reduces what you can understand when a person speaks they may become diagnosed with an articulation disorder now i am coming from the perspective of working with pediatrics but you can also see articulation disorders appear in adults after they've had some type of brain injury such as a stroke um, traumatic brain injury all of those types of things so articulation can impact um, adults as well as children and then what should you do if you suspect that your child has an articulation disorder the number one thing that you can do you as a parent can actually reach out to a speech therapist that you know or a private practice that is in your area you can call them and request to have an evaluation they should take your child's name your demographic information your insurance information who your child's doctor is and from there they should be able to get you scheduled for an eval and if you qualify and are eligible for services then they can start to see your child for whatever um, disorder they may have not just articulation but that's just what we're covering this week or if you're going sometimes what will happen especially when our children are younger and they have those first few checkups between birth and 24 months where they're going to the doctor regularly your doctor is checking to make sure at that age your pediatrician is checking between birth and three to make sure that they're developing correctly with those speech and language sounds so they are monitoring so they may notice that your child may not be saying words the right way at their age or they may not be using the right amount of words and they may on their own ask you if you're interested in a referral and they can refer 
refer you to someone that works with the hospital they're connected with, if they have already established some type of relationship with a speech therapy company or therapist that's working on their own, that's another way to get a referral. And if your doctor isn't noticing it, and you are, you can bring that to your child's doctor attention during the appointment and they still will should be willing to refer your child to someone that can help them. If you have a child that is between the ages of, of birth to three and you have an early intervention program that is in your state, you can reach out to that early intervention program yourself and do a self-referral. If you know someone who works with your agency, you can also talk to them and they can get a referral in place with you. And sometimes doctor offices are aware of the early intervention program that is in your state already have a connection with them and they can still follow that same policy of making sure that they get the referral to the right place so that your child can be tested. Now personally from my perspective as a therapist with children that are between the ages and birth and three, I love to see them get services in their natural environment because sometimes the clinical setting is just too much and you're providing services in a place where they're going to be every day with the people they communicate with every day. So in that instance not only are you teaching the child but you're also giving the family members tips and strategies to use when you're not there you're able to have direct access to them when you're in the home so that you can um, teach them whatever you're teaching the child and they may show interest and want to do it like I said um, even when you're not there and thirdly or lastly what you can do is if your child is school aged and um, you think that they need services, you can also contact your child's teacher, talk with them about what you see is going on. And these days, it's not a straightforward process. They have to go through the response to intervention program, which is what I refer to as RTI. So when you go and talk to the teacher, you let them know the problems that you're saying. They have to start those interventions within the classroom setting and it follows a tier. And at each tier, if your child, what happens is, it's designed to where if your child is on tier one and they're making progress at tier one, they may stay at tier one for a while. But after an entire grading period, if they have not made any progress based on the notes that the teacher has taken and strategies that she's tried on her own, then you take it to tier two in which the speech therapist or the special education teacher should get involved. And that may involve them coming into the classroom during a certain time or pulling your child out for 10 or 15 minutes at this time for them to be seen. They stay there an entire grading period. And then if they make progress there, they'll stay there for a while. If they don't make progress there, after another grading period, they may move on to tier three. Now tier three, from what I'm familiar with when I was doing it a couple of years back, you're still pretty much doing the same thing you were doing in tier two, but they're beginning to collect more information for your child to be tested, to be actually placed in your school's exceptional children's program or whatever your um, state or district or counties um, or local um, Board of Education calls their special needs program. They are actually gonna go ahead and move forward with getting the paperwork done, um, getting testing scheduled by the school psychologist if necessary or only by the speech therapist. And then by that time, they should go ahead and be tested to be on an IEP if it's necessary for them to receive services. So these are some different ways that if you are suspecting that your child does have an articulation disorder, the different ways that you can get them help. Now, of course, like I said, this is not only limited to um, children, I'm limiting it to children because that's who I work with. But of course, in the case that an adult has some type of neurological impairment or dysfunction that results into this, then you would mainly go through whoever your primary or family doctor is to seek out these services to also help an adult. So you can kind of follow that same avenue by either staying in contact with your doctor or if you know someone who does work with adults to see if you can get those referrals as well. Some articulation suggestions and tips. Now I have a few websites that I have lifted he listed here. Some of them I previously reviewed in um, some of my previous videos, but these are just a very short list. There are so many of them out there. These are the ones that I use regularly in my therapy to help my children who are having difficulty with articulation. Storyplace.org, I love it. 
um, if they have a library, a preschool library, and then they go up for grade through grade levels. But these are the specific stories that I use that target those age appropriate sounds for um, children that are between the ages of one to about four or five years old, starfall.com. When you go there, um, ABCs, it has all of the ABCs listed out. You click on it, it tells you what it sounds like, and it gives you words that start with them in the initial word position. And also, they review vowel sounds as well, because sometimes um, if we have children who we suspect to be of have apraxia of speech, they do, do have difficulty with the production of vowel sounds, so that can also help as well. Speaking of speech.com, I love it. It's not so much of an interactive website where you can get on and play any types of games, but it has free materials that, that can be downloaded by parents, therapists, teachers, or whatever that you can print out and save to your computer and use for your child um, in the home environment if that's what you want them to have. And then Quia.com is another good one. You don't have to be a member or have created your own activities. They have a plethora of free speech and language activities that are interactive. They have the hangman, they have word search, they have crossword puzzles, battleship. Um, if you go to Quia.com and you type in speech therapy, um, games, maybe R or uh, D or G or whatever, they will have so many games there. So that's another good one that's on here that's not listed. Um, as far as some applications, I use applications on an iPad or an iPhone, but you may be able to find these on Android as well. Articulation Station, I love it, it is great. Um, I apologize that I can't, Heidi, I believe, is the creator's first name. And I love her because she, um, was my inspiration for wanting to start my private practice from home. She actually wrote a story that she submitted to our professional organization about how she got started. I printed out her story, I read it, and it was so similar to my own situation to where she really gave me all the tools I needed in order for me to start a practice on my own. And I just loved from where she started to where she is right now. She started off being a speech therapist in her home, if I'm not mistaken her for the wrong person she started off doing a um speech therapy in her home she showed how she set that up and now for her to have her own apps and all of those things is wonderful um articulation station is the best it covers just about every sound you can also work on phonological processes and i love the way she has it set up to where if you just are interested in just doing one sound then you can purchase the activity for that one sound or you can um purchase it all together. I started off kind of doing one sound and then maybe a few months back, I had maybe over four or five sounds that I had already purchased and then she had a deal going where I could just get the rest of it for like $5.99 and I went ahead and bought the entire program. But it is worth how much it costs and I really do love it. And then I think it's Naed Apraxia Speech App. Now I use this with all of my children, whether they are apraxic or not, but I love them because they start off with working on the sound in isolation and syllables and two syllable words and ending sounds. Um, you can buy these apps individually or you can buy them as a bundle and it is worth it. Um, another one that I have that's not listed on here, I think is Phonics Studio. That's a good one. And it covers blends and all sorts of sounds as well. There's another app called Phonemes where it actually takes all of the sounds in the English language and there's a woman that makes the sound and you can only see her, her lips but it shows you how the sounds are made so that's another good one and of course for YouTube channels of course I listed speech language beyond because I'm trying to build up my videos that especially my interactive series videos where you can sit your child in front of it and it'll be just like they're getting a speech therapy session at home I do advise that you do sit with them for the first few videos um, until they until they can get it on their own and they can go back and keep reviewing these videos and reviewing these videos until they conquer it and I'm pretty sure there are a whole bunch of other ones out there um <laughs> to be honest when I was going through doing this I just didn't have the time to go through and try to find all the channels but Carrie Clark is another good person I'm subscribed to her channel her perspective is a little bit different from mine in that she gives you strategies by discussing those strategies with another therapist that's also currently working in the field. Um, I believe she does have activity books that she does on her website. I think it's speechandlanguagekids.com. She has a podcast. I just recently looked up her most of her podcasts.
podcast. She has a lot. I think she has actually two podcast channels. And I'm not sure she recorded anything for this particular year of 2017. But she has a lot of things already pre-recorded. All of her YouTube videos are transcribed as you go through and you read them. Most of the time when she puts out her videos, she also is posting live on Facebook as well. So she's another good person, Jenna Rayburn. I love her. She does a lot of things with teachers, paid teachers. Her stuff is very affordable. She also has, has a blog post. She gives a plethora of good, good, good ideas. She has a lot of stories that have been submitted to um, our national excuse me, our professional organization. We get a magazine out every quarter or so that they give us. And she has submitted so many good articles on things that she's a she's a school therapist that currently still works in the system. She gives ideas and tips and strategies on how to decorate your classroom, how to do creative things with working with your kids. And her products are so colorful. They're so beautiful. They will draw your children in. I and mean, they're good for everyone. So those are a few other people. And they also have, Carrie has a YouTube channel. Um, called speechandlanguagekids.com. Jenna Rayburn has one listed under her own name. And I think she's just really starting to build her channel up too. So those are some other major people that are out there as well that are doing a lot of good things with speech therapy that I feel like you would be able to use at home with your children. And last but not least, um, you may be looking for free and inexpensive activity books that you can use, of course, speechlanguageandbeyond.com. Um, I list that website there for you and all of my activities that I have that actually target articulation. Heatherspeechtherapy.com, love her site, have it bookmarked on all of my devices so that if I need some new therapy ideas and things I can go to really quickly that it's there for me. I mean, y'all, she has everything from the syllable wheels to the word, the articulation boards that have all of the sounds in every position. She has a plethora of things. I think she also has a blog. She also does um, teachers, pay teachers, if you want to log on to that and buy some of her activities. Um, and if you go to her website and it says speech therapy worksheets you click on that and all the free stuff that she has is right there for you another one is miss lane's um speech therapy or miss lane the slp hers is slpmaterials.blogspot.com if you go to hers it's set up like a blog but she has like the different words that kind of sit on the right side of the page, you'll see articulation, apraxia, language, receptive language. If you click on any one of those words, it'll take you to the area that you're looking for. And it shows you all of the free things that she has available for you to be able to use. Uh, if you want more information in depth, if you need to look for professionals in your area, if you want more uh, in-depth clinical studies about how articulation may impact your child, www.asha.org everything you need you can find there and please continue to watch my youtube channel i am getting to the point where i am doing my best to put out videos weekly and i try to think about things that you can use at home as parents as well as trying to make my channel um, available to the graduate clinician, an SLP that's currently working in private practice such as myself, or an SLP that is also in the classroom. I'm going to try to make this channel where if anybody from any side of the the occupation, and whether you're working in it or if your child does something with it or has to use it, that there's something there that you can understand. And of course, please tell a friend. I thank you all for watching. Look out for next week where we're going to cover the area of language. And I hope that you enjoy Better Speech and Hearing Month. And I'll see you in the next video.